Let's get physical, physical, literally physical and out of breath. Let's go. <laughs> hey, Taylor Tots, welcome back to Justice is Served. As you can tell, girl, I am sweating the house down. I was like, oh, honey, I literally walked in the door and said, I'm going to film now. Uh, so that way I can get it done and get on here and tell you about the amazing day. Uh, I know it always seems like I'm having an amazing day, but again, girl, I'm choosing it to be an amazing day. <laughs> so, uh, I, Chris and I just went and watched with the dogs. Um, I, uh, was like, you know what, we're just going to do the normal route. And then we got to this side area where there's like a ton of beautiful homes. So I was like, let's do this little sidebar over here, girl. So we did. And it was so pretty. Uh, it was, it's still humid and hot. It was like in the nineties, girl. Uh, but the breeze was going, but I'll tell you that breeze was not strong enough to keep this big girl uh, not so hot, babe. It's not, it's not hitting to where I don't sweat. Ooh, I'm so wet. Look at that. So gross. Um, but anyway, it was great to get out and go walk. Um, eating healthy again today. I had a call with Steve, um, Jan, to just go over some different things. Um, like how he eats healthy and things like that. So he was saying really to get things into six small meals. Um, and just telling me the calorie count to, to do and things like that. And I was like, you know what? I love it. But right now I really want to get a hold of my own life, uh, before I start, you know, um, committing anything too strict, uh, because I want to make sure that I have my eating to what's comfortable for me. Um, and again, I have that habit of like not eating. Um, and so when I do eat, it was, um, a bit more consumption than I should have been doing. Um, but of course this is day, you know, three going on eating healthy. So I did really good. I didn't do the whole thing of waiting and then engorging myself on anything. I didn't eat anything bad, which is fantastic. Uh, we ended up going to um, Fadi to eat. It was a Mediterranean restaurant. So I ended up getting their kale salad and had them add chicken shawarma onto it. Um, it was good. I'm not going to say it's the best place for Mediterranean food, but it's just quick. It's fast. Um, I know the kale salad is great. So I was like, you know what? I was craving it. Even though I have kale here. Do y'all ever do that? Like, do y'all ever have the same ingredients? Um, but just because somebody else is making it, it tastes better. Like, <laughs> my girl. But um, a friend of mine, um, or a friend of mine, my best friend, Steven, he was telling me to watch the new Queer as Folk. And I don't know if any of you watched Queer as Folk uh, back in the day, but it is something that when I was in like middle school, going into high school, it was airing and it was on uh, Showtime. And my parents thought, that if they blocked the channel, that we wouldn't be able to watch that that channel. So it was like that, Cinemax, and uh, HBO. So this was on Showtime. Sorry, this was on Showtime. And so I uh, found out that if you push the number 2020, which is what Showtime was on, it would turn to it. So every Sunday, um, I would tune in and I would go to bed early and I would put a, um, a towel or a t-shirt under the door so the, the light wouldn't be as bright wasn't very smart because you can see the whole outline of the TV um, brightness going around the entire door. But um, it was something that I was like, oh my gosh, this show is amazing. It's the first time I ever experienced the gay world. Um, and just, it was a lot. <laughs> I don't know if any of you watched it, but if you've watched it before, you have got to to watch the, the previous seasons, not the newest one. Watch the previous seasons. It is very risque, but it is one of those things that I felt so empowered as a gay man to, to go in and, and not necessarily empowered, but just like excited that of course, because I was in school and of course I was watching things that adults were watching at this point. Um, and I remember like even going downstairs and my stepdad was being funny and like had turned it on there. I was like, oh, 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 it's this gay show. You know what I mean? Like very that. And um, I was in here like, shit, I forgot it was nine o'clock already. I got to go or 10 o'clock. I think it was 10 o'clock. And but I would tell you, it made me so excited to become of age, to go out and like get into the gay world and have that click and family and friendship that I saw on the show. The show was very exaggerated. I'm not going to lie. There's a lot to it. And not saying that none of that stuff happens, but it was a lot. It was a whole lot, girl. But I loved it. And so I've been on the fence about wanting to watch the new, uh, the new um, launch of Queer as Folk. It's completely different. And I didn't know that the whole thing is in New Orleans. So I knew that I had seen uh, some entertainers that I know on the Gulf Coast that said that they were in it, but I didn't realize that the whole thing was filmed and based around New Orleans. And 
it's crazy. Not because it's, um, it's like they took many different things that happened. And this is just the first episode, girl, because I feel like I've, this damn episode seemed like it put me through every single bit of the ringer, girl. All the works, girl. All the works, all the feelings, all the gigs. Um, at the end of it, I don't even smoke and I didn't need a cigarette. I was like, girl. <laughs> I texted Steven. I was like, how dare you put me through all this emotion in just one episode. Uh, the first episode. But it was so funny because um, I had seen a lot of people on the Gulf Coast that was in, the, in filming there. Um, but it was it's not that it is anything that happened in New Orleans. It was things that's happened in um, some of history um, and even Pulse. Um, I know that you, a lot of you know what ended up happening in Orlando at Pulse Nightclub. So this was very, like, very, very touchy subject, especially for the first episode. And honey, I was good at first. And I was like, you know, my friend's like, are you ugly crying yet? And I was like, not yet, but I, it's it's got me shook, girl. But girl, once I got to the, to, to the hospital, I was like done. And spoiler alert, sorry, I know it's already too late. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. I'm going to put spoiler alert, like, earlier in the video because I'm like, ah. Um... But yeah, it is, it's a lot and it's, it's really good and I can tell it's going to be fantastic. But girl, that opening scene, that very first, like one minute into the damn show, honey, you can tell they spared no, no sense or inch of skin. Let me just say that. And <laughs> I was like, oh my goodness. I was like clutching my pearls that I don't own. Um, but it was so good. I can't wait to watch the rest of the season, but I got so motivated after watching that because, you know, uh, Steve and I was talking today, not Steve and, but Steve, uh, Jan and I was talking about, you know, he does, he's the life coach. We were talking in general and, um, you know, he's like, well, what is it? Why are you motivated to lose weight? And I said, I'm finally ready in my life to start choosing what is healthy for me to eat and what I'm putting in my body. And, I've been eating like a damn teenager for so many years and I feel like I use it as an excuse because of, you know, being raised on fast food that it's so hard to break that. But at the same time, it takes the same amount of energy to, to choose bad food as it does healthy food. It does. I just, it's just my own thing. And I know y'all are seeing this box back here. I know you're seeing this box back here. I got a couple of things in, honey. <laughs> Got a couple of things in, and I'm gonna leave it there until the people that have sent it to me uh, tell me I'm allowed to open it because I'm so excited to see what's in there. I opened it just to see the card on the top to say I'm good with you opening it on camera, but then I messaged the person and said, am I allowed to open this um, on camera and when do you want me to open it? Um, because of course, you know, I wanna make sure that everybody's getting an opportunity to see it and knows when it's gonna be presented. And then there are three cards, two different people. So uh, let that rack your brain a little bit. They have a way of I'm supposed to open it um, on one of them. So there's two parts to it. Super excited to see it. I'm so appreciative of y'all sending me things, but um, I, I wanna make sure I'm opening when y'all actually know to watch so that you can see the reaction. Because I, again, I didn't look at it. I haven't opened anything. I opened the, just the top to get the card and that was it. Cause I could see uh, when I opened the tape uh, cause it didn't have an address or do not open or whatever on it. Um, but yeah, so uh, my birthday's coming up July 8th. It is coming up quick. Uh, and some of you have asked, um, because y'all are like me, I don't click on the description on people's videos. So when you watch my video, there's a description box on it. It's a drop down. It actually shows you the address that I use. It is not my home address. It is an address, but it's not a PO box. It is actually through UPS. Um, and I use it so you can actually send things there if you want me to do any kind of unboxing for my birthday. Um, or even just send me something fabulous. I don't have to do it on camera. Um, but y'all have already sent me some things already. I'm so excited and I'm appreciative of you doing that because I know your money is, girl, y'all work hard for the money. So hard for it, honey. I don't know why that's stuck, stuck in my head, girl. I'm gonna be singing this all night tonight. But July 8th is my birthday and I wanna go live on my birthday that night. Um, I'm hoping. <laughs> so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna end up having... Um, just a live where we can all do it together and I'll open any gifts that are sent in that time. And then we'll just sit and chit chat and just hang out. Um, but yeah, I just, I had such an awesome day. I wanted to come on here and chit chat. But the, the main thing I was talking about as far as the eating healthy, the other aspect of this is, is you can't really control everything in your life. But the one thing you, that you can control, and I'm finally making the decision to control it and I'm hoping I stay on it. So that's why I'm putting it on here so that y'all can hold me accountable is I 
really feel like I deserve to be healthier. I deserve to be excited to look in the mirror. And I'm already, I already love looking in the mirror, honey. I stay in the mirror. I'm not going to lie. But I look in the mirror and of course there's always going to be something that we don't love about ourselves as far as our image. But the one thing I can control is the food consumption and what I'm choosing to eat, which is making me bigger than what I actually have to be. So it's time that I start being an adult. And I, and I sound so weird to say that because I'm clearly an adult. I'm doing adult things. I'm adulting. Um, but, you know, I think our mindsets, I don't know about you, but I've always wondered, like, is, is there a day that I'm just going to wake up and my mind's going to say, you're an adult now. You think adult ways. Like, because I don't feel that yet. <laughs> I don't. I feel very, I don't feel like I'm a teenager by any means, but I just feel very like in the moment. And I, I age is just a number and my mind is to just enjoying life and enjoying people and um, experiences in life and just that. I mean, and I feel like now is the time uh, to, to just do what's going to make me extremely happy and excited, which is finally get control of something that has haunted me for so many years, which is the eating issue. I just, I literally eat when I'm bored. I eat when it's an occasion. I eat for everything. And it's, it's stupid because we make, there's so much relationship with food uh, that it's ridiculous. And I don't, I don't know why. I don't want to put that into, I don't want to project it into something else. You know what I mean? Like, I don't want to project it into like becoming like, food is addicting. Let's get real. But I don't want to be addicted to working out. I don't want to be addicted to eating healthy. And this is what Steve and I was talking about. He said, you know, what, like, what is, when is the last time you weighed? And I said, to be honest with you, I don't know. I said, I don't have a scale. Um, and he said, what it, well, what is your ideal weight? And I said, again, I don't know. And the reason why I don't know is simply because I, I don't know about you. And you can put this in the comment section. I become addicted to weighing myself. I do. And it is something that I know about myself because I, like, I, I will lose weight and I'm so excited to get on that scale. But if I gain a pound, I'm like, when the world, like, so I literally every day, it is like the first thing on my mind is to get on the scale and see if I lost anything and it's not healthy. So I'm like, I do not want this in my house. We don't even own a, um, a, um, uh, scale. I don't know why I was sitting there thinking the damn thermostat over here. My brain is done. These carbs is already coming out of my body, girl. I can't remember. Sure. Um, <laughs> but I don't want to become addicted to it. And I said, I don't really care. I don't have a goal. Um, and he's like, you know, and I understand that, you know, making goals is something that makes you driven to do it. But I think my goal now is to be healthy and to be healthy. Um, I think I said healthy twice. Healthy. <laughs> I just want to be healthy and happy. And whatever that image may look like while doing that process, so be it. But I just want to enjoy the ride and I want to start looking at food as if like, cause I told him one thing that is my biggest issue is I look at food as if I'm missing out on something. Um, not because of the volume of eating it, but just the flavor. And when I see other people eating stuff that looks so good and then I know tastes amazing and then I love the taste of it, I feel almost like why am I doing this and why am I punishing myself? It's just food and you're missing out on things that you love and that's the part that I have a big issue with now that I'm a little bit more mature in my life is that I am letting something like food be what I'm the most passionate about. And I don't even cook, girl. Like, that's the sad part. <laughs> It'd be different if a girl cooks, but I don't cook. So for me to sit here and, and put food on this like pedestal of like, oh my gosh, like, I'm so jealous they're getting to eat that is sad to me, like for me personally. And that's the part where I don't think I've ever been to this point in my life where I'm like, I think that way. And I promise you, this is not going to turn into a weight loss channel. It is not girl. It is not. This is just my life for day to day. We're going to talk about a bunch of different topics, but I want you guys to hold me accountable to, to eating healthy and keeping me on track and you know, if you want to do the journey with me, then add me on Instagram, send me pictures of your success. And, and again, I'm not going to share this with anybody unless you want me to, but it's one of those things that it's kind of like, some people always need a partner to do things as far as like weight loss journey. And this is something that like, I used to be like, okay, well, hold me accountable to go work out with you and to do this. And I'm like, that's not their responsibility. It's my responsibility to eat healthy. It's my responsibility to make that decision. It's my responsibility to get my ass off the couch and go on and, and be active. And 
my partner's great. He's always supportive. And if, if I want to go, he's going to go. He's, he's about it. But the great thing about it is too, is that I don't feel like I, I, the only time I can go is if he goes. And, you know, I mean, there's going to be times where he wants to go walk by himself to clear his head and same for me. And, um, but I mean, tonight we walked together and we took the dogs and I, to be honest with you, the dogs were wearing my nerves out at the beginning because it's like they wanted to stop and pee on everything. They're both girls, by the way. So I'm so confused of what they're marking. Um, because I'm like, girl, you, yeah. I thought boy dogs only marked on everything, I'm just saying, and I was so over it, and I'm like, girl, can y'all just walk? I am trying to, I am trying to lose weight. <laughs> but, um, with that said, it was an awesome day. Again, 900 degrees here in Houston, Texas. Humidity through the roof, making my hair curly as I'll get out. You know, just can't keep a, uh, keep my hair straight to save my life, as uh, Rich Lux would say. And, um... Yeah, I mean, I just, I was like, let me hop on here right after I got through sweating the house down because, I mean, again, we're holding me accountable. I want to do this. I'm not saying I'm going to work out every single day, but I am going to be making a lot healthier choices when it comes to eating and the portion size and holding myself accountable to be a lot more responsible when it comes to it. Because, again, I don't want to wake up a month from now, a year from now, four years from now, you know, whatever it may be, and say, oh, my gosh, why did I not get control over this issue a lot sooner and live my life to the fullest because I do feel that my weight holds me back in a lot of situations and it, and it's not just because I can't fit in a seat for something because I can fit in seats but it's like flying it's not comfortable to fly I, I do fly I can fly I don't need two seats I'm not saying there's something wrong with needing two seats I'm just saying I don't feel comfortable flying because it's especially for long flights because sitting that long it's uncomfortable when you're large I, I'm like girl I'm over it you know car rides. I mean, I will stay in the car forever, girl, <laughs> driving to where I need to go. But the bigger I get, the more I notice that it's taking a toll, like especially on my lower back because I'm sitting weird and things like that. And I don't want to wake up and say, girl, get a grip. Like, I mean, even going to theme parks. I don't know if any of you feel the same way, but I love going to theme parks, but I feel that because of my size, it now freaks me out. I mean, I don't know about you, but I've gotten on a roller coaster before where it clicked and it was a Superman, and it, when it went upside down, it like pushes you against the seat, and then it clicked again, and then I almost had a panic attack because I couldn't breathe. Because it was that thick. I mean, that thick. Because I was that thick, and it clicked down to make it so much tighter. Um, and I about had a panic attack, and we're like, like hanging to get off the thing, and I'm like, oh my gosh, I need to get out of here. And I'm not even that type of person, girl. Like, I ain't even like, I'm very like chill to an extent um, when it comes to that kind of stuff. But I'm like, if it wasn't for my weight, I would feel comfortable um, it, and the rides would, I would fit better in the ride. Let's say it that way. Cause the ride isn't meant to fit me. I'm meant to fit the ride. <laughs> I know that sounds so stupid, but I don't know about you, but my stomach girl, when I'm trying to push down, like on the Ninja at Six Flags and it, it's that bar that goes across your waist or your hips, pretty much not even your waist. My stomach is in the way. So I have to like lean back, push it down so that I feel safe. Like I'm not going to fall out. And that is something that even if, even if it's unspoken, it's embarrassing. You know what I mean? And it's it's one of those things. It's time for me to get a hold of, get a grip of my life and get a hold of what I'm eating. Because again, no one is force feeding me. Nobody is saying I have to eat these unhealthy things. But I'm not going to get to the point where I was when I was eating healthy in the past. Where like every, I turned it into a negative because I used to get so frustrated because people don't get it when you say no to like just stop trying to force you to eat things that you don't want to eat. And I used to get really angry about it because I'm like, girl, you like, this is so disrespectful. I'm telling you, I want something like, please just back off. Stop trying to force me to eat it. And you know, the thing is, is, is one bite's not going to kill you of anything. Uh, well, almost anything. <laughs> I don't know what my mind went to as far as eating something and dying immediately, but, um, maybe like a battery or I don't even know. Anyway. Um, but I will say I have grown a lot since the last time I decided to make a health change. Um, because last time it was to lose weight to fit in a gown. This is no longer about wanting to fit into something um, clothing-wise, and there's a goal to lose weight to, for a time frame to get into it. There's none of that. I just really have to start getting a day-to-day -day realistic mindset. And, you know, I keep hearing this and saying this and embodying this, and, and this is what I have to do to get to it, which is being 100% authentically you. And I feel with this weight that I have that I am not 100% authentically me because I don't feel that it's me anymore. I feel that was me in the past because I just wouldn't address it and I wouldn't take ownership of it. And I would just, I was having an excuse. 
and a french fry and a hamburger and some pizza and pasta and everything else but now I, and again i'm not saying i'm not going to fall off you know there's no one is perfect but I'm just saying it's time for me to finally own up to it. And I can't be 100% authentically me until I am 100% authentically me. And that is, I, I've got to get myself um, on track. And I'm on track now. So let's keep it rocking and rolling. And I appreciate all your words of encouragement. Um, I'm so excited for July 8th for my birthday. I cannot wait to, uh, to go live with all of you and hang out and chit chat and just have a good time. I'm so pumped. Um, and I cannot wait to open this. So stay tuned to see when it's going to come. Um, I, I can't wait. There's a huge box inside. I, again, it's in bubble wrap. So I didn't get to see what it is. But I cannot wait. <laughs> but look, I'm going to go take a shower because I feel gross as I'll get out. My skin is radiant. I don't know about y'all. But this dewiness uh, of sweat turns to radiance afterwards. Um, but the smell's not lovely. I'm just saying. Um, yeah. Just saying. <laughs> All right, guys, I love you guys so much. Thank you so much for all of your support, Taylor Tots. And if you are new to the page, just so you know, if you follow me and you subscribe um, and you support me, I then transition your names into Taylor Tots uh, because we are family here and I appreciate all the support because there is no uh, Justice is Served channel without all the amazing Taylor Tots out here supporting me and, and making it grow. So make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Hit the bell off to the side. Make sure it says for all notifications so you can see any posts that I have. If you are new here, just know I post every single day at 5 p.m. Central Standard Time. But the one thing I will urge every single person to do, if there's somebody you feel that would love my page, share it. Share it. Share a video that you think that they would love. Girl, it's Pride Month. Let's get a little bit of love out there, baby. <laughs> all right, guys. I love you so much, and I will see you tomorrow night. Mwah.